happened this week? Just how are you feeling about your team and where you guys are and where you're headed? Well, you know, our, our immediate goals have been to get better. And so I think with every practice, uh, we just had our sixth practice the other day. And after these uh, exhibition games, that's what we look for, uh, getting better at both ends of the court, uh, learning how to play with each other because these guys have never played together before. Uh, and I think we're on the right track in that regard. So uh, that's that's what I feel good about. Hey, Coach Doug Farnberg, the Associated Press. Uh, two questions. Just talk about the sure. defense tonight and how it seemed to you guys play pretty solid defense and then just Keldon's effort. I mean, two days here and he was a huge, a huge impact tonight. Well, uh, I thought the defense was pretty solid. I, you know, we started out slowly, couldn't make a shot, but uh, they didn't let up defensively. They kept uh, their focus in that regard, which is going to be important uh, as we move on. And Calvin Johnson uh, just played a really solid uh, basketball game. You know, he shot if he was open. He made cuts to the bucket. Uh, when he did go to the bucket, he was, he was uh, very physical, and he was solid in the uh, – half court defense. So he had a very, very good night. Coach Steve Drumright with Redline Editorial. Uh, what do you feel um, turned the tide for you guys in the third quarter? You guys shot, shot a lot better, but was there something else that turned the tide for uh, you there? Our pace was better offensively. I thought we got a little bit of mud uh, and their physicality kind of set us back on our heels a little bit in the second quarter, uh, but the pace improved in the third quarter. So we were able to get the ball up the court a little quicker uh, shared it better and thusly uh, ended up with more open shots. Brian Winhurst from ESPN. I know that you're limited in what you can do with this team because of your depth and your practice time and also fatigue of the players. You've talked about that. Does it seem like the guys who didn't go through the playoffs or maybe had a little bit extra rest have a little bit more spring in their legs? Uh, you know, I, I I don't know. I don't know how to gauge that, to be honest with you. Uh, I just know that when we started out, uh, we needed conditioning. So uh, we're getting better with each passing day uh, in that regard. But I, I can't tell you, you know, if you played in the playoffs or if you didn't. You know, the three guys that are going to be joining us, you would think that they're going to be in really good shape. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a plus. It's a pretty really ridiculous situation that you have here because – You've only got nine guys are traveling with you. You got three guys. You don't know when you're going to get them. I don't know how you're going to game plan, not knowing how you're going to play on Sunday. Uh, you've seen a lot of stuff. I'm not sure you've ever seen a hand like this. I have not. This is a little bit different, in all honesty. Uh, but, you know, I really got to credit uh, the young guys that are uh, with us that are not on the Olympic team uh, that have allowed us to have some practices other we would otherwise we'd be in real trouble having lost uh, Bradley and uh, Jeremy having to sit out for those last two or three days so those guys have saved us so that we could at least uh, field a group that could scrimmage and script things so uh, they've they've really saved us and now moving forward uh, we still won't have those other three uh, but at this point uh, that's not going to change. We just have to persevere and find ways to keep them in shape, uh, even though we're not going to be able to execute too much very well. Uh, so we're going to have to figure out uh, common denominators, you know, for this, this exact group. Uh, less is more, so to speak, is going to work. Inventing the wheel would be the worst thing we can do for this group. Coach, um, you know, uh, Keldon, of course, has been here the whole time, and, and we saw what he was able to contribute tonight. What is um, – what went into uh, picking JaVale to, to come and join you guys? We decided that was the, uh, the most logical and appropriate uh, choice, uh, given the choices we had, uh, that he fit the best. Bob, Chris Mannix with Sports Illustrated. Um, you mentioned the three guys that are coming will be in shape. They'll also be coming off grueling, you know, playoff series. And you've yeah. 
you've experienced that. You know what players feel like after that's over. What kind of expectations are you having for how they're going to feel physically coming into this? I have no idea. And I'm not trying to be glib. I'm just being totally transparent. We've talked about, you know, are they going to have jet lag? Is it going to be like two days later after they land and they'll be okay the day before? They get her the day before the game. Uh, so maybe it'll hit them two days later and they'll be okay for the game. Uh, maybe we should play them a little bit in the first half and see what they're like. Uh, something, some, uh, some, in some ways, it might depend on if everybody else is healthy. <laughs> and if they're not, then they got to play. So uh, we've gone over lots of scenarios, uh, but we haven't figured it out yet. That's for sure. Coach Guillermo Garcia from Spain. How did you see the Spanish team? How did you see uh, Pau Gasol after two years without playing? Thank you. Well, just in general, uh, you know, Coach Scoriello is is a good friend, and uh, I, I just have to say, you know, he he has got them executing as well as they ever have. Even though a couple guys are a little bit older, uh, they really understand how to play basketball. Uh, it's a it's a beautiful game when you watch them play, and I'm not just trying to. Uh, make him or their team happy, but uh, they deserve so much credit for the way they read situations and the answers they have for what you might do defensively. On offense, they're totally unselfish. Uh, you know, the post-up guys do a great job. Uh, you know, of course, you know, Powell's not the Powell of old, uh, but he's still a competitor uh, and he still has great hands and he's still a great passer. And so he gets big under the under the net on the block, and he's a load because he has all those skills. So uh, I'm sure that they're happy he's still playing. Two summers ago, um, USA Basketball was able to have more people involved, like on the the broader staff. And for instance, like Jeff Van Gundy ran your scout, things like that. With the smaller staff, I'm wondering how you're breaking that up. And then I was also wondering if you had already begun to look at and prepare for France. Uh, we've been preparing for France for two years. Uh, we don't just start to prepare for them the day before. Uh, I think about it every day. So uh, that goes without saying. Uh, as far as the staff is concerned, uh, we, don't, we don't really have any less staff than we've ever had. Jeff still scouts for us. He still, I talk to him frequently. And Mark Few, Mark Few was here. PJ Carlissimo was here. Um, Spo obviously was here. Uh, Jamal Mosley was here. So uh, everybody's, you know, Spo was new because he did the select team, but we still have all those people here. I don't know what you mean by smaller staff. Uh, two questions from the Zoom room, and then we'll let Pop go. First, go to Tim Reynolds, please. Thank you. Pop, how valuable can it be, or how valuable would you expect it could be that you know to do what you want to do over there, you're going to face adversity? Somewhere along the way in Tokyo, there's going to be adverse moments for this team. The fact that this team has already gone through some adversity here in Vegas, how much can that the, the fact that you guys have been through some already, how much can that help you? Uh, I think it's huge. You know, I think all of us are, are better for the adversity we go through uh, because you either handle it or you don't. Uh, you figure it out. And these guys have had to do that. Uh, they've kept their heads up. Uh, there might be a disappointment here or there uh, or an event that takes place, uh, but they move on. And that's what, you know, in a, in a sense, that's that's what life's all about. So this is no different. Thank you. Our final question will go to Ferdinand Rivera from Viva TV. Hey, Coach from Puerto Rico. What Hi. do you think of the team improvement from day one to today? Uh, everything. We were in better condition. Uh, we understand how we want to play, what we have to do 
uh, for this group of people, uh, what we have to do offensively and defensively. Uh, so they've, they've come a long way in a short period of time. And that's what's inspiring and uh, keeps me uh, very ex excited about the, the whole group that they still have a, a long way to go. Uh, and we've got another uh, week before we play. So although that's not a, a long time, thinking about having about four practices uh, to add to the five or six we've had, uh, I think is wonderful uh, because we need that time. So hopefully we'll continue to improve during the week and uh, be ready to play a, a very good French team. An editorial. Uh, when you came into the game in the third quarter, were you looking to, to provide a little bit of, of a spark there or what, or what did you see and how, how uh, why were you so successful in that third quarter? Um, honestly, just, you know, being active, like you said, being a spark, you know, and uh, like I said, I'm out, I'm out here to, you know, be the energy guy and uh, bring life to the team uh, whenever we need it. And, you know, third quarter I came in and, and, and we need a spark. And not just saying because, you know, I got some, some, a couple buckets, but just on defense and just talking and everything, you know, just, just trying to bring some kind of energy, some kind of spark so we can get over that hump. Hi, Keridan. Akiko Yamawaki from Kyoto News, Japan. Uh, how, how comfortable are you to going towards uh, Tokyo now? Uh, I, I'm pretty comfortable. I feel like that, um, I mean, I know my role with the team. Um, and I feel like that, um, I mean, my teammates have my back, my coaches have my back. So uh, I'm comfortable going into Tokyo and, and doing whatever they need me to do for, for us to uh, win, win games. Keldon, Joe Varden from The Athletic. Um, you, you got banged up a little bit there. What, what happened? Uh, really just diving for the ball, trying to make a play. You know, uh, it happens. Uh, little, little bruise. Uh, I'll be ready uh, whenever we have practice again or whenever we need to go again. I think it mainly just knocked the wind out of me. That's all. And um, I was ready to come back in uh, as soon as they wanted me to. And then I know these games don't count, and you've got guys in the locker room who've won NBA finals. Um, but I'm wondering what it was like at halftime. Um, you know, the first half where you guys didn't shoot it well, you were down last game before Tokyo. And I'm just, I'm just wondering what the mood and, and atmosphere was like in there. Uh, we know what we're capable of. Uh, we know that um, – we just keep shooting. We're getting good shots. Uh, keep shooting. But the main thing is just uh, keep the intensity up keep, and keep playing defense, keep getting stops. I feel like uh, the offense take care of itself. Uh, uh, we're going we gonna to eventually hit shots. But uh, I think the main thing was is just keep locking in on defense and keep uh, helping each other and talking. Any more questions from the room? If not, we will go to Zoom and let's start with Chris Jarrett. Hey, Keldon, uh, hoping you could hear me. I'm wondering about the level of uh, maybe apprehension or, or dread even about going into uh, a bubble situation in Tokyo where you're going to have to quarantine for a while and uh, you're not going to be around a lot of other humans, uh, especially in the arena where you're going to be playing in front of an empty arena. Um, I, mean, I went to the bubble in Orlando um, and uh, I just felt like we locked in, you know, uh, not really worried about seeing other people and uh, too many different things that we worry about winning. And uh, I feel like if we got quarantine, we, we do whatever it takes so we can uh, uh, get there safely and uh, get to the arena and back safely so we can uh, play in and get on the court. We'll go next to Leonardo Torres. Hey, Keldon, uh, it's Leonardo Torres from Peru. Congrats on the win, Keldon. How proud are you to be part of the Olympic team? Uh, thank you, first off. and um, It's a dream come true. I'm definitely proud to be able to represent my country. You know, um, this is something that, you know, you dream of uh, when, you're, when you're a child, when you're watching all, all the other great players come through and play for the play, play for United States. So um, just being able to do this, you know, is, you know it, it kind of hit home, you know, that uh, given this opportunity that you know that, a lot of people trust me to put this jersey on it and go play. And um, I mean, this is big, you know. Next, uh, Fernando Rivera from Cuba TV and then Hector, uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong. 
Fernand, go ahead. Hey, Calhoun from Puerto Rico. What was your what was your reaction when you they call you to the Olympic team, and mm -hmm. what would you like to show to people as a player in the Olympics? Um, my reaction was uh, I was pretty much lost for words. Uh, just having this big opportunity and to prove to people, I wouldn't really say like I'm trying to prove anything. Uh, I know who I am as a player, and I uh, I know what my teammates and coaches expect uh, expect out of me going going forward. You know, so it's not like uh, I'm coming here trying to do something that I'm not not comfortable with. Uh, I know what I'm good at and what I'm not good at, and uh, I feel like that I play to my strengths and and just go out there and play. Thank you. And next. Keldon, good to see you, man. Nice to see you too. Question about: uh, Did you happen to hear when you got selected when you got moved up to Team USA? I know you guys block stuff out, but did you happen to see any of the? Questioning and the Keldon Johnson, you know, given all the options that Team USA theoretically might have had, Keldon Johnson, who's this or why? Did you happen to see any of that? No, nah, I don't. I don't really be on social media like that, to be honest. Uh, and um, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion. You know, I can't control what somebody else thinks, but um, I mean, it's not going to deter me from going out there and doing what I'm supposed to do for my team. You know, um, I mean. Obviously, you know, they know what I'm capable of and I know what I'm capable of. So, uh, I mean, whatever people think, that's that's their opinion. But um, just go out there and play. Given the, the talent uh, that you're on Team USA with, does this feel especially nice to have a game like this in your first official, you know, first game as an official member of Team USA? Um, I mean, I just play my game, honestly, you know, Cut and make it easy for for my teammates and my teammates trusted me giving me the ball in the right spots. So um uh so I mean some games it'd be better than others and I understand that. So uh, I think uh, having a good game is good, but uh, it's definitely uh, time to prepare for for the next opponent. Appreciate it, Keldon. Best of luck, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Next up, Noah Lagara George and Sam Reynolds are on deck. Hey, Kelvin, you had a solid performance tonight, and generally you've looked pretty comfortable alongside Team USA from the moment you checked in against Australia. Why do you think you fit in so well with this roster of All-Stars, MVPs, and former scoring champions? Um, I mean, I can tell you, I just go out there and, you know, play, you know, uh, just try to try to make it easy for my teammates. And um, that's, that's pretty much all I can say. You know, I trust in my abilities. I put in the hard work. And uh, you know, my teammates trust me to trust me to and put me in the right spots to, to make good plays. And if I could ask a follow-up question real quick, uh, you have a ton of really, really good teammates here. Is there anything that you're hoping to learn from them or take away from them by the end of this Olympic experience? Definitely 100 percent I think that um uh anything that anything that I don't know and that I'm not sure of, I ask questions and uh I'm definitely here to learn and, you know, grow as a player because there's so many things that you can learn from so many great players that's here, you know. So um, whatever whatever that, you know, like I said before, that I don't understand, you know, I'm not afraid to ask. And I think that, um, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. But, yeah, like I'm willing to grow and learn, you know, and uh, I want to get better. Thank you so much. No problem. We've got time for two more questions. We'll go to Tim Reynolds and then we'll close it out with WBA Chinelato. Thank you. Hey, Keldon, Tim Reynolds with the AP. Um, like everyone else said, congratulations on, on being named, first of all. Thank you. You, um, all these guys on your team, they've all known Pop longer than you have, but you're the one who plays for him. Have you gotten a sense in your time with him just about how much this means to him, how much this these Olympics, this opportunity, this job means to him? Uh, definitely, you know, um... I mean, it's big for all of us, uh, not just Coach Pop, but I feel like that, uh, you know, he takes it very seriously, uh, just like every game that he takes in the NBA. And um, he's preparing and um, he's giving us the right, the right uh, reports and things like that and coaching us up. So uh, I think he takes it very seriously, uh, being, being uh, able to, to coach uh, this Olympic team. Thank you. No problem.
Hi, Keldon. I'm Davide from Italy. Uh, congrats for being selected for the team. Obviously, you've been around for the whole Vegas experience. Uh, what if, how do you think this group has bonded and what do you think you guys need to do moving forward to be ready to play on Sunday? Um, I mean, just continue to, to look at film and get better, you know. Uh, I mean, that's about it. I feel like, uh, you know, we're bonding, we're bonding great. I feel like um, we all like each other, but uh, I feel like just, just keep getting better, keep getting better, keep learning and um, just get ready for Sunday. Thank you.